All right. So let's talk about differential equations. Uh, first off, what you're going to do in our calculus class is very, very basic. They have a whole course on differential equations, and engineers and math majors, they end up calling DFQs. So if you see that reference, they're just talking about differential equations. All right, let's make sure we understand the goal. And our goal is figure out what y is. And to believe it or not, you've been doing this for a while. So if I start off and I give you something like y prime is equal to x squared, and I ask, what is y? Well, if the derivative of y is equal to x squared, how I figure out what the regular y is? Well, if I'm going to take the antiderivative, and the antiderivative of this is going to be x cubed over 3 plus some constant. And we have just solved our first differential equation. Oh, why is this called it? This is called a differential equation because, well, math people aren't creative. It's an equation with a derivative in it. And when you solve it, you actually figure out what y is, meaning you have solved for y. Right? Now, there are a couple of ways, there are a few other ways I could ask that exact same question. I could say f prime of x is equal to x squared, solve, meaning what's f? You came up with the same answer. Or I could do dy dx is equal to x squared. That's a, you know, it's an equation with a derivative. What does y equal? We end up with this, and we're done. And actually, we're going to be dealing, so all three of these are the exact same problem, but the way I'm going to talk about it today really deals with this form, where we actually have this dy over dx equaling whatever your function is. So I've got three examples I want to do. Uh, we're going to start off with one I consider well, technically four. I'm going to call this example zero, and now we're going to talk about example one. Right? So as far as example one goes, I'm going to start off with dy dx is equal to x squared over y squared. Now, this is a little different than you're used to seeing, because normally you're used to seeing your derivative equals and everything that's on the right just has x's. Now what's going to happen is things on the right are going to have x's, y's, and sometimes x's and y's, just like this problem. And what we're going to be doing is something called, a, it's called separable differential equations. And the reason they're called separable differential equations is you can separate the variables. And here's your general rule of thumb. you got a dy over dx. Right? First of all, I want you to treat this as a fraction where we have a dy and we have a dx. And your job is I want all the y's on the left, all the x's on the right. And so the way we do it in this problem is uh, cross multiply. And so I end up with y squared dy is equal to x squared dx. Notice all of my y's are on the left, all of my x's are on the right, and my job, so I'm still up here, i got to figure out what y equals. So the way I'm going to get rid of those derivatives is I'm going to take the integral. Now when you look at this, this looks exactly like problems you've been solving. Like what's the integral of x squared dx? Well, that's going to give us x cubed over 3 plus some constant, right? some number we don't know. What's the integral of y cubed dy? Well, kind of the same thing. You get y cubed over 3 plus another number you don't know. Now, we're not done. And the reason we're not done is, remember, our goal is, what is y? I don't, I don't want to know what y cubed over 3 equals. I want to know what y equals, meaning i got to get y by itself. And there's a couple of things that are going to happen. First, all right, let's, let's clean up these numbers we don't know. So if I go through and I subtract this number I don't know from both sides. Let's talk about what happens here. So I end up with y cubed over 3 equals x cubed over 3. And you know what a number you don't know minus another number you don't know? It's still a number you don't know. Right. So notice uh, I got the one number we don't know. We're not done yet. I still don't have y by itself. So to get y by itself, I'm going to multiply everything by 3. I'm going to multiply everything by 3. Well, let's see. Let's see, that's going to cancel, so that's going to give me y cubed. And it's going to cancel 3. That's going to give me x cubed. Plus, you know what 3 times a number you don't know is? It's still a number you don't know. Right, no need to have a 3c or c divided by anything. Anytime you add or subtract a number you don't know plus another number, it's still a number you don't know. And we're still not done because i got to get y by itself. So... My final step is I'll take the cubed root, and so I end up with 
y is the cube root of x cubed plus c. Now, there are two types of answers you're going to be asked for as far as differential equations. This is called the general solution. And the reason it's called a general solution is it's got a c in it. You don't know what that number is. Right? The other type of solution we're going to talk about is something called a particular solution. In a particular solution, they have to give you more information. Like when they give you your original when they give you your original differential equation, they'll have to give you some more information. They, they've got to tell you like, oh, let's say y of 0 is equal to 2. And what they're effectively doing is they're giving you a point to plug in. They're saying when x is 0, y is 2. So if, I, if, I, if you're given this point, which is called an initial condition, when I plug in 0, I better get 2. When I plug in 0 for x, I better get 2. So when I plug it in, let's see, I'll plug the 2 in for y equals the cubed root of 0 cubed plus c. Well, that's just 0. When I cube both sides, I end up with c is equal to 8. I've now figured out what c is, so my particular solution is going to be y is equal to the cubed root of x cubed plus 8. And we have now we have now solved our differential equation, meaning we figured out exactly what y is. Uh, another uh, now as far as figuring out what the c is, sometimes it's easier to figure out what c is at the begin at the end. Uh, you can figure out what c is at any point after you've taken the integral. Notice we've taken the integral. You know, I could try to figure out what c is at this stage because if I were to plug in 0 for x and 2 for y at this stage, I would get 8 is equal to 0 plus c, and so I'd find out that 0 is equal to 8 at this stage. And then, of course, I'd finish solving it, and I have my particular solution. All right, example number 2. So let's start off with dy dx is equal to x squared y. Notice... I have a derivative equal stuff, and I got a bunch of x's and y's on both sides, on this side. And our job's still the same. To solve a separable differential equation, I want the y's on the left and the x's on the right. So I'm going to have to divide by, I'm going to multiply both sides by dx and divide by y. And so I end up with dy over y is equal to x squared dx. Y's are on the left, the x's are on the right. Now I can take the integral of both sides. And let's see, this is still going to give me x cubed over 3 plus some number. And now when I take the integral of dy over y, we got to remember, oh, that's kind of the tricky one, so you better remember that's natural log of y. So I've now, and technically there's a plus c, but in practice, here's what happens. You could put a plus c here and a plus c here and then subtract them and get the c all the way on the right. Honestly, at this point, once you take the integral, Go ahead and put a plus c on the right-hand side, knowing that we're just taking care of all the numbers we don't know and sticking them on the right. So now we have to solve for y. So to solve for y, in this case, uh, let's see, we've got to get rid of the natural log, so we're going to raise both sides to the e. So we end up with y is equal to e to the x cubed over 3 plus c. And at this point, I need to talk about got to review some basic properties of exponents. So if I gave you, this has nothing to do with this problem, but if I gave you like e to the a times e to the b, basic properties of exponents, when you multiply, when they have the same base, you can add the exponents, so that gives me e to the a plus b. Well, we're kind of going backwards here. If I have e to the something plus something, I could break that apart and say that's e to the x cubed over 3 times e to the c. And now I get to ask my favorite question. You know, if you have e to a number you don't know, guess what that's going to be? That's just going to be a bigger number you don't know. So I can really rewrite this and say it's equal to e to the x cubed over 3 times a big number we don't know, but we usually write that in front. So I'll put that c e to the x cubed over 3. I have now have my general solution for this differential equation. Now, if I wanted a particular solution, the problem would have to give me more information, and typically that more information could look like y of 0 is equal to a negative 2, which means when you plug in 0 for x, you better get negative 2 for y. So I get negative 2 
is equal to C, E, well, 0 over 3 is still 0, and that's a 1, so I just found out that C is equal to negative 2. So now I know that my particular solution is going to be Y is equal to a negative 2, E to the X cubed over 3. Now, the last example, right, let's look at a slightly uglier differential equation. So let's say I could give you dy dx is equal to x squared, shoot, x y squared plus x. Now, to solve this. And most often, the issue here isn't the calculus, it's the algebra, because our job is to separate it. We need all the y's on the left, all the x's on the right. And actually, before we solve this, I need to talk about why that's always going to be the case. Whenever you're taking an integral, you've never seen a d something, you've never seen a dy in the bottom, you've never seen a dx in the bottom, and you never will. So when I have this dy over dx, if you notice that dy is on top and this dx is on the bottom, that can't happen. So that's why we multiply the dx on this side. If you have a dx on this side, that means I need only x's on the right-hand side. I have a dy on this side, which means I need only have y's on this side. So back to this problem. I've got to figure out some way where the x's are going to be on the right and the y's are going to be on the left. And the first step here is we have to say, well, I have x's, I have x, x in this term and x in this term. I'm going to factor an x out, and that's going to give me y squared plus 1. Now when I look at this whole thing, I have dy dx is equal to x times y squared plus 1. Now I want to put the y's on the left and the x's on the right. So that gives me dy over y squared plus 1 equals x dx. Now I've got all the y's on the left, all the x's on the right. I'm going to take my integral of both sides. And that looks familiar. That's going to give me x squared over 2 plus some number I don't know. And this one, you have to remember, that's going to be arctangent of y. I've already taken care of the c. I'm not... Oops. So now I've got to actually solve for y. So in this case, I'm going to take tangent of both sides. And so I end up with y is equal to tangent of x squared over 2 plus c. And in this case, I just wanted the general solution. I don't need to figure out what c is, and I'm done.